This is Mark Bell from Supertraining.tv, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, with some outstanding footage here for you tonight. We have the one and only Kelly Starrett working directly with Ben Alderman of CrossFit Gold out here in Natomas. Ben is a high-level CrossFitter. He finished ninth at CrossFit Regionals here in uh, Northern California. And uh, Ben has been working directly with yours truly because Ben is smart enough to realize that strength is never going to be a weakness for him. Strength should never be a weakness for any of you out there. Make sure you're keeping up to date on your powerlifting. But anyway, check this video out because Kelly Sturrett gets into some really good stuff here with Ben. Uh, ben uh, has very tight hamstrings, but not only does he have tight hamstrings, he almost doesn't know how to organize his body because he's in a constant state of overextension. Uh, we call that, in technical terms, overextension pants. He's overextended, and that's shortening up his hamstrings. So his hamstrings are tight, but they're not nearly as tight as we thought. And Kelly takes him through some easy steps on how to tighten up his stomach, his butt, how to reorganize his hips, and all those things lead to Ben finding out that his hamstrings are about three feet longer than he expected. So check this video out. I apologize the audio is not great, but it's some great footage, and there's a lot to learn from it. And that is it from supertraining.tv. Until next time, later. I don't know. My, my abs move first, my feet move. Wrong. You wish. Yeah. It's the other way around. So here's what's happening. Move your legs first. Now what we get is the tail wagging the dog, which is precisely what happens when you walk this way. Pull up what happens. Relax. And you have this leg. Right? Sure hip, clean hip flexion. Right? Just help. Just relax. This is the end of your posterior range, theoretically. Right? So this is what, what it looks like. Is, oh, my God. That's so stiff. But it may be that you're stiff. Now watch this. Squeeze your butt. Take a big breath in your belly. Exhale, put your butt your spine, get stiff. This is how we get stiff before deadlift. Get tight, get tight, get tight. Now don't push. If you push, you create larger space around your spine. I want to create smaller space around your spine. So you set the butt first, squeeze your butt, just like Mark Bell does. Big breath in the belly. Exhale, belly button to spine. Now you gotta pull, you gotta pull. There, now you're tight. Now freeze that. When you take a breath again, you're gonna breathe into this little space. You're stiff, then you take a breath. Then you shove that diaphragm down, and you press down into that tight belly, right? This is where people got mistaken. They were like, oh, push out. Uh, no, now it's made a bigger space, so it can, right? right. I have to a smaller space, so I squeeze my butt, set my abs, take a breath, and then lock, and push down into that thing, and now you're right? Let me show you that. Take a big breath in your belly, exhale. What the hell happened to your hamstring range? Why is it straight? Let me a lot better. It's full and normal. What's the difference? Your spinal organization. Why do we prioritize spinal position first? Because what looks like really tight, ridiculous hamstrings is unbelievable hamstring range. But check this out. Turn everything off. Lift your legs up one inch. Turn it off. Do it again. Do it one more time. Now look, you just rip back into reprotection mode. And it's because your spine is being like, oh, no way. I'm going to let you drag those nerves past that unstable system. And the better are you, and you see how you overextend on the way down. You have to stop your from your butt. There you go. And if you're hamstring dominant, quad dominant, stiff, you always have a load. See how you're pushing your belly out right now? Yeah. That pooched out belly is there. Right? That's not a, a strong belly position. This is why we see so many hernias in athletes, because they're leveraging this bad mechanic. Right? We need to be shrink wrapping your spine and let your spine move independently. What ends up happening is if you're in this model, you're using all of those anterior structures to pull your anterior. Them. So to get set up in the bottom position, like on a deadlift, I'm doing this. And I'm getting tight, use my, my belly, pull myself tight. Look at all the spinal areas here. And what is, what, what's tight? You mean when I'm bone on bone? When I'm really bone on bone or triple bone on bone? <laughs> what do we say? Triple bone? Uh, triple bone. <laughs> Strippers aren't looking for attention. They're looking for tension. That's why you can't be that girl. Don't be that girl. Don't, yeah. be, Don't that be that, that girl, man. It's dirty, and it's bone on bone. That's the problem. <laughs> so the issue is that, so stand up for real quick. Well, how'd you get up? Did you get braced before you moved? No. What'd you do? You went right back to your old school broken self. Right. Get set. Why wouldn't you practice getting set all the time? Now you're set. Now you can get up anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah. And this is what people don't understand. The genius of some of our best athletes. Squeeze your butt. Screw your feet into the ground. Keep your feet straight. Pull it. Belly tight. So 
there's that fold. Now you're flat. Now we've taken care of it. You set a good position. And then when you decide to fold forward, load your hips. Oh, don't you see a search on around right there? That's fine. You got to compress, belly tight. Okay, pull your belly tighter. You'll see that that'll give you a little bit more hamstring range. There you go. Good. And in that position, you're here. You should be the limits of your range here. So I'm very flexible, right? This is the limits of my hamstring. Because this is the limits of your hamstring. You're about 90 degrees. Right? Then, in order to grab, I'm just going to move this forward. Now I prioritize the loading system here. Prioritize the hip sequencing first. And then I use my knees to tension, which is exactly, looks a lot like, what's the name of those strong guys who have the world record? Oh, yeah, those, those guys. They, uh. they always used to be used the knees to tension and position. Uh. Donnie Thompson does this really well. What's that British guy who's so strong? Thousand eight before it was broken. Andy thing. Bolton. Yeah, Bolton does some the same deadlifting. Thing. I know deadlifting, right? So you can see what they do. Always prioritizing the trunk first. Load the hip and hamstring. Adjust and load and tension, and then you can use the bar to see the upper back and then tension. One of the things that Mark does really well, for example, he loads, tightens up here, really tight, and then you can see pull and the tension. It's so stiff. But he's keeping using the knees to drive the position. Does that make sense? And then Matt had no change of back position. So all the dogs you did there showed me you were initiating. First initiation was overextension hands. So every time you pull, boom, there's a big bump. And when you do that, you're broke. So uh, what looked like tight hamstrings was more of a case of overextension pants than anything else? Well, we like in to say it's a, it's a motor pant dysfunction control <laughs> issue. No, the issue is that we see it's, a, it's we always prioritize motor control first. You don't just need to stretch something. You make sure you understand the technique. And the best expression of technique is the evolution of coaching. This is why, you know, coaches cueing, break the bar, armpit forward, get tight, press down. These are all cues about putting your biomechanics in the best position possible. So always see if you can fix it first with motor control. Does the athlete know what the goal is? No. Let's fix that first and then hit the step for step. You know, but the issue is that if you want to go right for the mobilization, I'm like, uh, you're not He likes to uh, get back in that position again, that deadlift position. That's right. It's that sequence. You can do it that fast. Even Jesse, look how long has he spent in that zombie land? Zombie land. Summoning the, the dark god of purple face. <laughs> right. That's One thing right. he does is he kicks his head up a lot. That's you know, right. He kicks his head back and then he gets crazy and, over. And like so, there you go. That's right. And so the head is that keystone element, right? And you know, when you're Olympic lifting, you'll notice that the best Olympic lifters, the head is in line with spine still, right? That's the head position doesn't really change. Much. Maybe it's up a little bit and it comes in line, but it's still not in that rough position. If you look at the San Francisco Ballet, when you're watching some of these ballet dancers, look at my extension. And look at my extension when I throw my head back. Oh, <laughs> bam! So if you throw your head back, what you're doing is you almost kicked yourself. letting the whole system fall apart. That's why you cannot throw your head. It's a keystone. Uh, I think uh, Jesse's cues is like, show me your chins. No, no, no. He's like, show me your chins. You're like, oh. You stand up, you should show the fellas. You can actually get a lot of leverage and get a crazy lockout too on, on your deadlift if you can pull your face back behind the bar. So how's that for a cue? Face back behind the bar, that's my new favorite cue. <laughs> there you go.